All right, so now let's take a look at jumps. Not conditional jumps, just regular jumps. It's important to point out that a really good reference for this, uh, because it does get a little confusing, is the instruction set manual. There's a copy of it at that bit.ly link right there, but you can also find a version of it at the nicerland.com site that the authors have written for the book. All right, so we're going to be talking about JMP, RJMP, and IJMP. The jump, relative jump, and indirect jump for the AVR microcontroller. All right, so a jump changes the program counter. So the program counter is the thing that keeps track of where you are in your program and causes the CPU to execute an instruction other than the next instruction. So typically, you're going from the first to the second to the third instruction, but sometimes you want to go first instruction, second instruction, and now I want to go to the 20th instruction. Use jumps to do that. There are two kinds of jumps. There's the unconditional jump, which is what we're going to talk about today, the R jump or the, the JMP or the uh, I jump. And then there's conditional jumps, which are effectively uh, what most people call branches. So there, there's these two types of jumps that can be done. And the conditional jumps are the ones that you find in things like loops or if statements, whereas the unconditional jumps are basically a uh, a, a way of going from one location of memory to the other location of memory uh, without checking for a particular condition. Okay, so let's take a look at unconditional jumps with the AVR microcontroller. And it doesn't really matter what microprocessor you're dealing with, they have all equivalents to this. So there are three unconditional jump instructions with the ATmegas or the AVR microprocessors. R jump, jump, and indirect jump or I jump. So relative, regular, and indirect. We label the location where we want to jump using some letters, and uh, and we follow that unique name with a colon. That's what we do in assembler code. Then in front of the jump instruction, we mention the name of the label, okay, and the assembler will figure out what that label is really supposed to be in terms of memory. This causes the CPU to jump to the location that we have labeled instead of executing the very next instruction. So it looks like this. So you see that L1 label? Well, if I have R jump or jump and then followed by a label, it will go back to the line uh, labeled by that label. Okay, that's why the label is there. All right, there are three ways to provide the jump address. We either tell the program counter what the address is through the exact value of the operand, so it's a number, or else we say to the program counter, take your value as it is right now and add a value to it. Okay, that's the relative jump. And then the other one, the indirect jump, is where we say uh, take whatever value is in the Z register, not to be confused with the Z bit of the status register, the Z register, and, and go to that location. Okay, so let's take a look at a regular jump. And a regular jump is made up of 32 bits. And the 32 bits are a mixture, like really here a mixture, you can see it. Of, of both the jump command and the jump location. So what we're saying right here is that both the location and the command are stored in this 32 bits. The location is the operand for the jump operation. The jump instruction, the thing that says go and do a jump, are these bits right here out of the 32. And they're split unintuitively or counterintuitively. They're split uh, between the most significant bits and then some bits that are sort of halfway in between the most significant and least significant bits. Okay, but it's all those bits together. And that's, uh, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It looks like 10 individual bits are what would be read to say this is a jump operation. The location is what's listed here in X's. So we have the 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. That is the, the, the command that says go and do a jump. And then everything else that, that's labeled here is X's, so not committed to right now, is the location. So an example of this would be 32 bits arranged like this. So you have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, etc. Okay, 32 bits of that. And that's both the jump command and the operand, which is the location. And you can see that if you recombine those zeros and ones together, you get a bunch of zeros and then one one zero. That's what's in black right there. Okay, so 32 bits all separated out into both the command and the location for the jump. 
Let's take a look at how this actually works. In the jump, the operand contains the address of the destination where we want to go to. When a jump is executed, the program counter is going to be loaded with the value of the operand. So take a look at the assembler code right here. We have a jump uh, label at address number six, but we're starting at location zero in memory where there's a load immediate and there's another load immediate. And then after that, we do the jump. So we load 15 into register R16. Then we load five into register R17. Now we're at program counter value two. Okay, we're on line two here. And it says, I don't want to go to line four. I want to go to a different line. Okay, and, and just so we're clear, the address here is two. Then there's an address of four. The address three isn't there because the jump actually takes up 32 bits. Okay, two words. So we have here a jump that says 9406. That means jump. And then the, the 0006 is the operand. So we load the program counter with six. And now the program continues at line six. Now line seven. And now we go back to label name. It's a jump again. And it takes address seven and address eight here to complete jump, uh, the jump command. Okay. So now we put six in the program counter and it goes back up to that location. That's how we did just two jumps right there. All right. Then you have relative jump. And the advantage of relative jump is that the instruction takes less space than a, a regular jump. And the reason, the difference between these two things is that a regular jump has a lot of bits associated with uh, locations in a vast amount of memory. So you have uh, something like 22 bits or so uh, that can be used to access all sorts of memory within the at mega. Now, that although it does take 32 bits to encode that whole operation. If you want to be a little bit more uh, compact, you can use a relative jump, and it means that you're only going to jump within a certain boundary of the existing location of the program counter. Okay, so it's not as uh, uh, flexible as a regular jump, but in a lot of cases, the efficiency of relative jump is worth it. So relative jump has 1100 as the, the basic command. And then the other, let's see, that's 12 bits right there. The other 12 bits are the location that we want to go to. Okay, and you can see that in this case right here, what we want in the example is we want a relative jump to location 110. That's where we'd go to, but offset from the current value of the program counter, whatever that value is. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, we start off at location zero, we load two values immediately. And now we're at line two, and we have the relative jump. Now notice that uh, we have address two followed by address three, which we didn't have before because we're only taking up a smaller amount of space to create this instruction. That is really the, the advantage of this relative jump instruction. It takes less space. So we want to go to the location identified by label name, which is address five, but we're not going to encode 0005 into the instruction. Instead, we're going to say that we want to go an offset of two from the next location pointed to by the program counter. So it's not two plus two, it's going to be three plus two. Okay, so it's three plus two, that's location of five. That's a little trick with relative jump. Okay, so then it jumps to location five and we're going to do a relative jump back to label name. Now, we're going to go backwards in memory. So we have to use two's complement notation for the, for the value, okay, because we're doing a subtraction. So we're adding a negative number. And we put ourselves back to location number five. It's clever. It works really well. Next, we have indirect jump. And indirect jumps... Uh, don't use an encoding f uh, within the instruction itself for where to go. It goes and picks up that location in the Z register. So the assumption here is that the Z register has been loaded with the location that we wanted to go to. So 
In this case, what we have here is uh, an instruction with no operand, basically, just it's the command. And, uh, and so the program counter will go and fetch whatever value is found in that set register. Okay, so there you have it. Unconditional or non-conditional jumps, the JMP, RJMP, and IJMP.